Oh. The Prime Minister gave the Finance Minister a real vote of confidence last week as he outsourced the job that she was supposed to have been doing for four years and gave it to a man who's not even in the Liberal caucus. First, the Prime Minister tried to fire her in the newspaper, and now she's being shoved aside for carbon tax carney, a man focused on his own profits and his own corporate interests, who was brought in to serve as the de facto Finance Minister. She's lost her job responsibilities. She's lost her credibility. How long will the phantom Finance Minister endure this humiliation. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I am not going anywhere. on personal mudslinging and attacks rather than to actually talk about the economy. They don't want to talk about inflation because it's been down in the target range for seven months in a row. They don't want to talk about interest rates down three times in a row. All they can do is insult people. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Who's going to tell her? She just got a demotion and he hired a guy that's not even elected to do her job. Does anyone believe that carbon tax Carney is going to tell the Prime Minister how to help a family afford groceries as the loudest cheerleader for carbon taxes ever? If the Finance Minister isn't completely humiliated by now, can she explain why Canadians should trust a man who is the number one supporter of higher taxes to do her job? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, we are seeing more clearly than ever that the only thing the Conservatives know how to do is to level personal attacks and personal denigration. They do not care about Canadians, and now they're scared about the facts of our economy. So let me tell you some facts. Inflation in the target range for seven months in a row. Interest rates down three times in a row, and the IMF says we'll have the strongest economic growth in the G7. The Honourable Member from... ...has massive conflicts of interest in charge of the federal budget while shunning... I can't say that I missed all of you that much, but I did miss you a little bit. Um, but what I do want to say is that it's just typical from the Conservatives that when they have an eminent Canadian, someone who has given so much to this country, who doesn't agree with their economic vision or their vision at all in Canada, they attack them. Mr. Speaker, we need to be better than this. We need to support Canadians and be grateful when they put forward for public service. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Nose Hill. They're not even letting her answer the question anymore. <laughs> At a time when so many people are struggling to make ends meet and pleading for someone to fix the budget, I'm struggling to find a reason why the Prime Minister would put an out-of-touch elitist, active archpriest of carbon price uh, profiteering who has massive conflicts of interest in charge of the federal budget while shunting aside his female cabinet minister. What a feminist. Why does the now phantom finance minister have to get approval for Canada's fall economic statement from carbon tax, conflict of interest, Mark Carney? Yeah. <laughs> the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I'm actually really glad to welcome back to the QP roster Fine. the member for Calgary knows. We haven't heard her raising her voice for a while. Mr. Speaker, I'm not going anywhere, but I am not surprised to see the Conservatives continue cartoonish personal attacks. And that is because they are afraid to reveal to Canadians their plan for austerity and cuts, cuts, cuts. Because they know that's not what Canadians want. The Honourable Member from Peterborough, Kawartha. 
Mr. Speaker, we have two sources saying the view of some senior officials within the PMO, including Chief of Staff Katie Telford, that the Phantom Finance Minister has been ineffective in selling the government's economic policy, policies. So, my, you know, it, it's curious because we have a fake feminist Prime Minister who says he's all for women. Taxes are up, costs are up, the economy's in the toilet, and this carbon tax, Mark Carney, is now going to quadruple the carbon tax on all home heating That's across right. Canada. Yeah. So why is this phantom finance minister That's okay right. with being publicly humiliated by this fake feminist prime minister? Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the only people being humiliated today are Conservative MPs who have to listen to their colleagues wallow in the mud of personal character assignation. But what we are focused on is representing and working for Canadians. That's why, Mr. Speaker, the real news today is 30-year mortgage amortizations for all first-time home buyers. That's the real news. Mr. The Honourable Member from Peterborough, Kawartha. Mr. Speaker, it, it is not Conservatives saying that. It's the Prime Minister's right. Chief of Staff, Katie right. Telford, yeah. uh, for the record. And so I guess yes. the question is before this phantom finance minister. She, she simply has two choices. You know, is she going to join the graveyard of liberal female ministers yeah. under this fake, fi uh, fake feminist prime minister? Or, you know, like Jody Wilson-Raybould, Jane Philpott, right. or will she continue to be publicly humiliated? Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, what we are seeing today is the Conservatives running away from the reality about the Canadian economy. They are running away from the fact that inflation is in the Bank of Canada's target range for seven months in a row. They are running away from interest rates down three times in a row the first time in the G7 and wages outpacing inflation for 18 months. The only thing the Conservatives know how to do is traffic in cheap insults. Canadians are a lot better than that.